Hi, I'm Rui Pedro da Costa, organizer of the International Endo Masters 2015. Welcome to day number two of the first World Online Congress of Endodontics. It's been a marathon of the best endodontics has to offer, both in clinical and scientific knowledge. I'm sure you agree. Yesterday, we had excellent lectures and I must thank each and every one who sent an email confirming it. Today, we will start with a presentation from my good friend Diogo Guerreiro from Stuval, Portugal. Diogo completed his Master in Endodontics in the University of Santiago de Compostela. Diogo began his academic career in 2002 and he is now an assistant professor at the Lisbon Dental School postgraduate program in Endodontics. Diogo's presentations are marvelous, as you will testify, and he will take us in a voyage through endodontic instruments and instrumentation protocols that I'm sure will enlighten us on the best choices we can make regarding the shaping of root canals. I'm sure you'll enjoy. If you have any questions you'd like to send Diogo Guerreiro, just use the questions area. See you soon. Hi guys, my name is Diogo Guerreiro. I'm an endodontist from Portugal and I'm here today to present you a lecture about hybrid shaping. First things first, thank you so much Rui for the invitation to this International Endodontic Masters 2015 and congratulations uh, for the magnificent idea and um, to provide um, worldwide uh, endodontic education. So guys, if you have any questions, uh, just write on the comment box. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, hope you guys enjoy the lecture. So guys, I would like to start my presentation with this little story just to, to get you hooked up to the presentation. And I call it the story of an underestimated skill. And it's the story of Tom Brady. Tom Brady was a quarterback at the University of Michigan football team. And like all the kids in college football, he wanted to be a professional and play for an NFL team. NFL teams are very strict on their picks on the draft. And, and the system works um, that they base their picks on scout reports and, and then they have order to pick on the draft the kids to be professional players. So, Tom Brady, despite being a very successful player at the University of Michigan, these were the reports the scouts um, made on him as a player. Let's have a look. Skinny, lacks great physical stature and strength, lacks mobility and ability to avoid the rush, lacks a really strong arm, can't drive the ball downfield, does not throw a really tight spiral, system type player who can get exposed if forced to add lift and gets knocked down easily. Well, basically, <laughs> it was unanimous among scouts that Tom Brady um, was definitely not what you're looking for as a professional football player. And he ended up being picked at the 199th spot of the draft. Um, it's like uh, being the fat kid no one, no one wants on your team. And he was picked by a, a relatively small team called the Patriots. And this gentleman here um, is Robert Kraft, the CEO and owner of the Patriots. And the first time he met Tom Brady after the draft, um, let's hear what he has to say. This is getting painful. A young man walked over to me and said, Hi, Mr. Kraft, I want to introduce myself. I'm Tom Brady. I said, I know who you are. You're a six round draft choice. And I always remember he looked me like a laser eye to eye. And he said, That's right. And I'm the best decision this organization has ever made. Well, and. Tom Brady was completely right. Um, he took the Patriots to several times Super Bowl championship. He was considered the most valuable player several times in Super Bowl, uh, considered the best quarterback of the decade, and is now an NFL quarterback Hall of Fame. Um, so how can a player that's now considered one of the most important players um, of the sports, of this sport history, um, how can the scouts uh, have missed him 
and um, all those reports uh, saying that he was not qualified to be a, a professional player. What did he have that made him so special and um, that the scouts missed? And I call this the story of, the, of an underestimated skill because what Tom Brady had um, was uh, what is now today um, perfectly identified as a great capacity of decision making, especially decision making under pressure. And why have I brought this little story um, to our meeting today, to our to our lecture today? Because we in dentistry and um, in endodontics, um, we also need um, to use this skill of decision making. Well, and being the endodontic treatment, the sequence of events, we are obviously and constantly forced to make uh, these kind of decisions. And since the beginning, um, even from the more conservative axis cavity to a larger axis cavity to orifice location and anatomy awareness, uh, from early exploration instruments, if, what kind of movements do we choose from glide path to pre-flaring and whether we choose to do it manually or rotary, if we decide to use in intermediate instruments in our exploration, in our glide path, um, whether we're, we are able to negotiate the canal system and achieve patency um, to our infection control, what kind of choice of irrigants are we using, their volume, temperature and activation, um, are we following uh, Schilder's legacy of biological principles and how do we choose our shaping instruments and, and this last point is where I want to focus our uh, talk today. It's about the decision of choosing the shaping instruments. So today we'll be talking about hybridization of endodontic instruments and the decision making when it comes to choose your files. But before we start discussing files and file systems, let's just review um, what are our endodontic treatment objectives because um, sometimes we get lost in, in these mechanical objectives and forget um, their main objective is to promote the biological ones and uh, it's very important to understand that we shape too clean and sometimes we give too much importance um, to the files in the file system and we forget the biological principles. Um, since we're talking about files today, and uh, since we outlined this already, um, Schiller uh, perfectly described the mechanical objectives 40 years ago, um, and when they are performed properly, uh, we can shape root canal systems, we can promote disinfection, and we can obturate three-dimensionally um, the space we have just cleaned. It's very important to understand this. So taking in consideration the mechanical objectives and the biological objectives of the, of the endodontic treatment, um, I would like to discuss with you guys two points that I think I've, uh, are very important. Um, first of all, we have to understand that files um, alone can't touch um, all the canal wall areas. Um, so we have to rely not only on our shaping um, with the files, but also we have to rely uh, on the irrigation and the disinfection provided by our irrigants. We shape to clean, we open space with our files so that our irrigants can work inside the root canal system. A great example of, of this is when we have a situation when Confluent canals join in the apical third, uh, like this example here. Um, that area where the canals join, very hardly the files work um, on that isthmus. So we have to rely on our irrigants to remove all the debris, to remove all the tissue, and to remove the maximum amount of bacteria that we can.
The second point I would like to make is I would like to raise your anatomy awareness um, to root canal systems. Root canal systems are pretty complex and this video is absolutely fantastic from my dear friend Ronald Zapata, um, a Peruvian endodontist that's currently uh, in the United States in Miami and while he was uh, at Sao Paulo, Brazil, um, he did lots and loads of, uh, of micro CT scans and uh, he shared absolutely great videos on his page and um, I think you guys should follow him. He's also um, a speaker of, um, of this um, meeting and it's uh, worth to listen because this is our clinical reality in what concerns uh, to mandibular premolars. Um, we have to expect um, very complex anatomy sometimes and we have to be prepared uh, to shape, clean and operate these kind of canal systems. So when we see this diversity um, and complexity um, of anatomic features in root canal systems on one side and on the other side um, someone is trying to sell us this idea of one size fits all and that um, shaping of the root canals is a very uh, simplistic process um, I wonder if you guys are buying this idea or not because when we talk about um, hybridization of endodontic instruments in terms of shaping and the decision of, um, of choosing files to shape um, is based on what really concerns the clinicians and let me tell you um, I think the majority of the clinicians are really worried about file separation um, and actually file separation and the file separation incidents is quite lower compared to blockage ledges and, and root canal transportation. So of course we have to be worried um, about the torsional stress and, and, and the fatigue of the files and, um, and the probability of separation but there are other um, features like file system design of course and user experience that we have to use and, and to be knowledge of um, in order to um, avoid mishaps and especially because we are so afraid of file separation and, and that's not um, the main mishap that's happened, that happens when we use um, rotary files in root canal systems. Clifford Ruddle wrote an overview where he classified each generation of file systems and I think it's important for us to understand that perspective in a more visual way uh, if we're talking uh, about combining different systems in, in hybrid techniques and I don't want to at all make you guys sleep with uh, endodontic history or the history of rotary and instrumentation but it's, um, it's important to understand that the, the, the breakthrough in clinical endodontics progressed um, from utilizing a long series of, uh, of stainless steel hand files and several rotary grade skeleton um, to obviously the integration of nickel titanium and it, it happened in 1988 um, and back then Wally proposed the nitinol and uh, nickel titanium alloy for shaping root canals being two to three times more flexible um, than stainless steel uh, was obviously a game-changing feature um, of files manufactured from, from Nitai um, uh, since uh, now uh, curved canals could be mechanically um, prepared to uh, through continuous rotary motion with greater flexibility and higher resistance than with um, stainless steel hand files. Well, and if we if we consider uh, this the first generation of instruments, uh, especially after uh, Wally's um, initial investigations on the on the properties of, of nitinol. Um, several systems started to be um, commercially available to clinicians. Uh, Steve Senior's Lightspeed was one of the first and, and actually resembles a, a Gates Glidden, but it's a, a night eye rotary system. Another uh, system that was made commercially available, and you have heard, um, for sure you heard about it, it's um, Profile by Dr. Ben Johnson, and was um, 
an, a system with increased fixed taper along um, the active part of the file when compared to, to hand stillness steel files. And if we think um, about um, techniques and the technique we used, and if you, if you think that we were performing uh, crown down techniques in, uh, with hand stillness steel files, now with this um, system was a great um, advance in terms of shaping because we were using um, higher um, tapers for the, for the coronal third, uh, smaller tapers than the, the coronal for the middle and even smaller for the apical, each file open, opening the way for the next file in um, a much more safer and much more um, faster um, way to reach uh, the apical third of the canal in terms of, of shaping. And if it's true that um, it was faster and, and apparently less instruments than using uh, hand stillness steel files, um, this uh, kind of r recipe um, at the time um, for shaping um, root canals was like um, if you have a small diameter you use um, this sequence, if you have a medium diameter canal you use this sequence, if you have a large diameter um, you use that sequence. And uh, what, what ended up happening is that you um, would have um, the, all of the diameters of files and, and all of the tapers, 4 and 6 percent, and you would need to shape, knowing what we know nowadays um, about anatomy, um, you would need to use a lot of files um, in a system like this in order to, to perform a perfectly um, crown down technique. Still in this um, first generation of, uh, of files, um, we also have John McSpadden's Quantec file, also Steve Buchanan's um, great, Greater Taper files, GD you must have heard about, about it, a very similar system um, to profile, um, very, very variable tapers, um, and diff uh, a, a slightly different characteristic um, that's noticeable uh, here on this image, it's the, um, the different flute length um, on, on the several tapers. Also, they have a constant maximum fluid diameter of, of one millimeter. My objective here is not to describe each of these systems uh, in particular. Um, what I want you to understand is that this first um, generation um, of files, um, they all have uh, similar um, characteristics. And the most important uh, design feature of this first generation night I wrote in files was the passive radial lens um, that we can see uh, here in these cross-section images where we can identify the, um, the negative angles. And the major advantage um, was that this radial lens helped the file stay centered in the canal, maintaining um, the original anatomy. Um, but looking back now, uh, the main stress, especially for those now that, that use more aggressive cutting files, uh, was that with this first generation night eye files, um, seems like it took an eternity um, to shape uh, a root canal. The second um, characteristic that it's common to all these first generation um, night eye systems is that they have a fixed taper along their active blades. And the third characteristic is that all of these systems require a highly amount, um, a highly number um, of instruments. Um, to perform um, a crown down technique in shaping the root canal systems. After this first generation of instruments, a second generation was made available around 2001, and this second generation of night eye file systems uh, had um, active cutting edges, um, obviously, uh, more cutting action, less instruments needed to shape. And they also um, provided some design changes, especially to avoid taper lock. Some of these systems um, we, you may have heard about. I'm not going to describe them uh, specifically. Um, that's not the point. We, we're going we're gonna to skip this part a little bit. The second generation, an example, race files um, from Bracelet at the time. Uh, alternating cutting edges to avoid taper lock. One of the changes in another system. K3 from Cybernando, 
very aggressive file in terms of cutting. You might have experienced that too. And what I think was um, a breakthrough, um, my personal opinion, um, in terms of, of, um, of, of concept uh, in, 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 in shaping root canals, was um, the second generation uh, pro taper files that came up uh, around 2001 with this um, design feature that was completely revolutionary at the time, the progressive um, multiple taper within um, each file. But let me just go back a little bit. So the second generation obviously um, tried to, um, it's an evolution um, and, and tried to correct um, the, um, the flaws of the, of the first uh, generation uh, systems, uh, Nikai systems, and this uh, second generation um, active cutting uh, edges, much uh, more um, cutting action, uh, less instruments, and, um, and the design changes, especially the, the Alex angle and, uh, and the changes uh, on the pitch, um, are, are obviously um, correction corrections to the first generation in terms, um, especially this design, this design changes to avoid taper lock was, was very common the first, um, the first generation files. We, we, the screw effect that we felt in some of these files were tremendous and this, um, this taper lock phenomenon was, um, was tried to, to be corrected in this second generation. Um, so um, just getting back to Pro Taper now on the second generation, um, I'm missing here the um, SX file. Obviously, this Pro Taper, the original Pro Taper had um, six files, not not five. Um, I ju I'm just missing the the XX file here because it's um, it's a file that um, I I never actually used. I know there's lots of people that love it. Another um, segment just hated. Um, I personally never never was never a file that I used. Um, very often. When this system uh, came out and became available was, as I said before, a breakthrough because it's the first time we had um, files with a progressive uh, multiple taper and what does this mean? It means that um, we were used to shape in a crown down technique um, by thirds. We used um, larger uh, tapers to, to shape the coronal third, then a smaller taper to, to shape the middle third and to open space for a smaller, even smaller um, taper uh, file to, to shape the apical third. And with this progressive multi-taper, what we do is we apply a crown down, but we are always working uh, with the hour files uh, at the working length. And um, this was actually a breakthrough in terms of technique, because all we have to worry about is taking our file to the working length because the shaping information and the specific um, third where the file is going to work, that information is it's actually within the file. Um, so it's, it's a completely different philosophy um, in terms of, of shaping. So you guys can see here two different um, kinds of files within this um, original ProTaper system. Two files on the left, shaping files, the tree on the right, uh, finishing files, S standing for uh, shaping, F standing for finishing. So we have the S1 and S2, uh, same characteristics, um, tip, uh, the tip with uh, less taper than the D16, and the finishing files exactly the opposite, meaning the shaping files are used in a brushing motion to shape the coronal and middle third, and the finishing files are meant to prepare our um, apical zone. Now, if we, we have an image here of a cross-section um, of the original ProTaper files, a triangular convex um, cross-section, aggressive, they, they, were, they were really aggressive, and, and actually um, the latest files, the F2 and F3, were files that um, had some problems in terms of internal transportation of the canal and, and ledging. Um, here we have a chart of um, how different it is from the classic crown down to, to this technique where all the files go to working length. And we see that the, the first shaping files open um, the, the coronal and middle third to the, um, to the finishing files of this system. 
still within this second generation of files and because this original ProTaper system was far from being perfect. A few years later, I was released um, the second ProTaper, um, let's say, generation. Uh, called, they called it Pro, ProTaper Universal. Um, still a progressive uh, multiple taper where two more files were, at, were added, um, F4 and F5, and um, the mass, the metallic mass was reduced uh, in terms of core um, in, uh, in the finishing files F3, F4 and F5 uh, in order to try to, to give it um, less stiffness. It was a very, very stiff um, file uh, at the original Pro Taper system. And so at this point we have um, a second generation of, of, of rotary systems um, based on, on these characteristics, active cutting edges in contrast with the, the first generation um, that had the radial lens. Uh, the second generation less instruments since the cutting is more efficient, uh, improved design to avoid taper locks, especially the changes in the pitch and the LX angle. And this breakthrough of progressive multi-tapered files with the Pro Taper and the Pro Taper universal, universal system. If we compare both first generation and second generation uh, in terms of shaping, uh, obviously there's a disadvantage of the, of the more uh, cutting action of the second generation uh, in the apical third of severely curved canals. Um, but you may be asking, why am I um, showing this? Because um, for um, not for specialist uh, practitioners and endodontists experienced um, endodontists or even endodontic freaks that love technology and buy every system and every file that came out that come out on the market. But for the general practitioner that sometimes only has a limited um, amount of systems available or because of in his vicinity, there's not a commercial rep to sell them the newest products. Um, I think it's important to, to, to understand that we can use the advantages and disadvantages of, of each system and of each generation of files um, to suit our purposes in terms of shaping. For example, if we look to a severely curvature molar, upper molar, um, and we only have available Pro Taper Universal, which I had at the time. Um, if I was to to shape this curvature um, with Pro Taper Universal, um, if I used an F2, I would probably uh, make um, a ledge or an internal transportation, um, or even uh, or even I would separate the instrument. So here we can hybridize and we, we can use the, the advantages of Pro Taper Universal, which is a more cutting action, and um, we can use the advantages of Profile, a passive cutting action in the apical third. So what I did here is I took um, 10k file to a point of um, resistance prior to the curvature, not forcing the file. I took a 15k file and a 20k file to um, a point prior to curvature. My objective was to pre-flare so that I can use the S1 tip free, which is 0.17. So my objective is to get a straighter line access to that curvature. So with my S1 from Protaper Universal, I'm gonna shape the coronal third and get a more straight line access to the apical third. And I repeat these steps um, as many times as needed for my 10k file to reach passively to my apical third so I can get patent and I can get an apical locator um, read. When I do, I do exactly the same pre-flaring now to my working length. And I use a 10k file, if, uh, I used at, at this time a 10k file, a 15k file, a 20k file to working length and then S1 and S2 to working length, objective, shape the coronal and middle third again to allow a straight line access to my finishing files just to work on my apical portion of the canal. 
So what I did next was uh, start shaping my apical third with a F1 from ProTaper Universal. And, uh, and after that, um, I measured my foramen and decided uh, what would be my finishing file. Um, or uh, if you do a visual gauging, uh, because you need more cleaning of the apical third, whatever the situation, um, and you have to enlarge more, um, you, if you go to with, the, with an F2 from Protepper Universal in a, in a clinical situation like this, it's obviously dangerous. Um, there's a high uh, probability of canal transportation. So uh, what we th thought to be um, a drawback from the profile, the, uh, the passive cutting action and the, and the not cutting that much, it's actually playing in our favor here. So what we do is after Protepper Universal, we change system to a, a more passive cutting action system like profile. And we use a 25-4%, uh, a 25-6%, 34% and, and uh, 36% in the apical third to finish our preparation. And this is how it ended. Um, again, let me uh, remind you, and we are, we are at um, a meeting um, that is being broadcast all over the world, the 8,000 um, registrants. Um, if, obviously, if you are an experienced endodontist or if you have, have other systems available, and we'll talk um, about those systems in a minute, um, this looks kind of old school. Uh, I used to do this a few years ago, but it might, get, um, it might be useful um, for some general practitioners that, uh, that are starting or that, that, that um, don't have um, all the, the newest systems available. So, moving forward, and soon came the so-called third generation of rotary systems. <laughs> and now, instead of um, feature changing in design um, of the instruments, this um, third generation can be clearly distinguished uh, by the improvements um, of the night eye metallurgy. So, in this third generation, um, of, of file systems, what some manufacturers began to do is be, they began to focus on using heating and cooling methods for the purpose of enhancing night light properties. The objective was to reduce cyclic fatigue and improve safety. The phase transition point between um, the, the Martin Cytic phase and the Austinitic phase uh, was identified as producing a much more clinical, optimal metal um, than night light. Over a set conventional night eye. Some of these alloys received proprietary names um, from the manufacturers M wire, CM wire, and R phase, and R phase M wire from, from Dense Ply Melfa, CM wire from Colten, and R phase from Sabonendo. And all of these are proprietary, but of course, when you see um, these designations, you know they have um, the, the files have. Uh, a new alloy, a, a night eye with thermal treatment, and the objective of the manufacturer is to improve cyclic fatigue and torsional stress to the files. So new um, file systems started to be released, and the first one with, was um, Twisted Files um, from Cybernando with um, their proprietary um, R-phase um, nickel-titanium alloy, and followed by what, what the manufacturers start doing is they start releasing their second generation systems with improved um, metallurgies. So we start watching the K3XF, which is an improvement to the K3, and then uh, Mailfo released the uh, GTX the, with the M wire, which is an improvement to the greater tapers from Dr. Steve Buchanan. And all of these are second generation uh, with improvements. And, and the funny thing, um, Tulsa um, real, um, recovered profile from the first generation and um, enhanced uh, the, the alloy properties and, and released Profile Vortex, which is um, uh, an amazing file, uh, actually. And another of the third generation file is the CMR from Colten, the, um, the high flag system, which is um, pretty amazing. Uh, as it has a uh, shaping memory, as you can see um, in the image when compared to the conventional nickel titanium. 
at this point I would just like to tell you that um, I'm just giving examples um, in each of the generations and in this lecture I'm giving examples of, of systems and, and rotary files um, but there are a lot more and um, I have no commercial affiliation with any of the, um, of the companies that I mentioned here um, this is just an example there, were, there, there are a lot more systems we could, we could discuss but that's not the point I don't want to get into any particular system um, specifically the objective is to discuss um, hybridization and I'm, I'm talking in, in, in general because um, I want um, you to understand um, the weapons we have um, when we need to combine the systems, okay? Oh, and by the way, uh, Coltan is releasing um, some new iFlex files, new generation of iFlex files now at IDS Cologne. Um, so, like every day, um, new new files, new systems, new weapons we can use are coming um, to the market. Just um, we just have to take advantage um, and and use the um, the best features of each system um, in our way. But let's get going with our presentation, and we're here on a third generation of files, and the only problem that I, I see in, in this, and it's not a problem, but um, for, for people like me, um, back then I was, I completely uh, shifted from fixed taper rotary files to, to multiple variable taper. I was using a pro taper universal and these new systems um, were fixed taper and I would have to switch back to classic crown down techniques. And even though, even though iFlex, for example, and, and if you want to discuss this, um, you can talk with uh, Anthony Chaniotti, he's a brilliant and an artist from Greece, and he can tell you everything about a iFlex system, brilliant presentation on iFlex. I recommend you talk, he's the guy, to talk um, about uh, iFlex. So when we had a case where um, we suspected, um, or after exploration, we confirmed um, severe and difficult to, to manage anatomy um, we didn't have much choice we had pro taper universal and f2 was was a very stiff file already to do an anatomy like this um, and and at this point where this um, new metallurgies from the third generation uh, came up um, it was brilliant because we can use um, both um, both advantages of the systems. So what we did back then was we would do an exploration of the canal with an 8 or a 10k file, we would confirm a apical patency, we would establish our working length perfectly normal, we would create a glide path to that working length, everything normal, uh, we, we, you can do it manually with k files or rotary, uh, nowadays you even have probe ladder from, from Milfer, and then we would shape um, the coronal middle third prior to the curvature um, to make a straight line access to that to that more uh, curved part of the canal and we would shape this part with uh, the shaping files from the pro taper universal system so having this straight line access to the most apical part our irrigation will work um, better of course i'm not i'm not um, it's not here, but we, you always have to confirm that you m maintain your, your canal completely patent. So use a 10K file, obviously, uh, between your rotaries. Uh, keep, keep checking uh, your patent and let your irrigation work. We have our coronal, and third, uh, coronal third and middle third completely um, in straight line access to the most apical part. And now we need to reconfirm our working length, of course, because um, it, it can change um, during your um, your shaping, and then we we have a straight line and and a perfectly uh, safer way to shape our apical third. And and here on the shaping of the apical third, we would use um, these features of the new files with metallurgy. I I used um, I used a lot of the, the GTX files and and also the um, the iFlex files in this in these kind of cases. So here you have another example of um, hybridization between uh, systems 
uh, in this case ProTaper, ProTaper Universal from the second generation and iFlex um, uh, CM wire system from uh, the third generation. Well, well, but the evolution of the rotary systems kept on going and another advancement uh, in canal preparation procedures was achieved when this next generation came up, what we call the fourth generation um, and in a generation that includes um, the reciprocation motion. This four generation of files um, using these reciprocation motions have also fueled the single file um, technique. Uh, and I, I must say, um, this single file technique is sometimes sold to clinicians and to general practitioners as um, the best thing that ever happened because you can you can reach the apical third really fast doesn't matter we still need to use our irrigation and we still need to give time to our irrigants to uh, clean our root canal so don't buy that idea that single file is amazing because you can do one session in 10 minutes because it's not true at all don't forget our biological objectives uh, of our endodontic treatment um, that's where we have to focus. Remember, we shape to clean. And moving forward, this um, reciprocating uh, process on this fourth generation um, can be defined as um, a repetitive um, up and down or back and forth motion uh, of the file. It's, um, it's, it's an old concept from the, um, from the 50s, um, but that was re uh, recovered um, and and um, and with all the advantage of of of, of this uh, reciprocation um, movement in terms of, of shaping ability and, and safety, what we know about this uh, single file reciprocation uh, fourth generation systems is that um, they have a higher resistance to cyclic fatigue and torsional stress. Obviously, they're made of um, of thermally treated nitide, and they're also, in terms of shaping ability, they have the capacity of maintaining um, the canal very, the preparation very centered to the original um, canal axis. So in this fourth generation of files, the two uh, most widely known systems um, with the back and forth uh, reciprocating motions are Wave 1 and the Reciproc, Wave 1 from Mail for Reciproc from the German VDW. Um, again, I'm not going to go into detail um, in any of the systems, um, just informative to let you know they exist in the fourth generation. Of course, they have differences um, in design and in, in their cutting angles that are proprietary, um, but I will just going to pass the video just for you to have an idea um, of the difference between um, continuous rotary motion and um, the reciprocation motion. Of um, upper molar um, that we shaped with um, with the primary from wave one um, upper molar four canals. What we did is a 10k file to to glide path to establish patency, uh, get maybe a locator read and establish our working length, uh, and then we shaped the four canals with a single file. And um, it's obviously faster again. Um, be careful. Um, it's not about speed. It's about um, time consuming to clean uh, our um, canal system, okay? Another example, um, uh, Reciproc from VDW. Uh, I love this file uh, and, and I must say I'm not a very, uh, I'm not a great fan 
of um, reciprocating um, single files, um, but I, I love this file um, when it comes to remove um, Guda Persia from, uh, from in, in, in cases of retreatment. I love it. It's, it's pretty fast to remove, uh, keeps our preparations very centered. Even without the, the use of any um, type of, of solvent, uh, I don't like it, it's kind of messy. Um, but with, uh, with, with R25 from Reciproc, um, without solvent, I, I can, I can um, remove the Gouda Persia. It, it has a great ability um, to bring coronally um, the Gouda Persia and, and keeps um, our preparation very centered, avoiding um, commonly mistakes. Um, that other other retreatment files um, used to used to be prone to. Also, in this uh, fourth generation of um, reciprocating files, we have uh, the self-adjust file, uh, also known as SAF, um, a reciprocating um, file that obviously uh, doesn't do a back and forth motion, but does an up and down. Um, motion stroke and these um, beautiful pictures were sent to me by, by my good friend uh, Oskar von Stetten, an, an excellent clinician from, from Germany and a very good friend of mine. Beautiful documentation. Oskar is actually known for, for his um, marvelous um, pictures on the microscope and these uh, macro pictures here are absolutely amazing. He was kind enough um, to make a, a demo video for us. Unfortunately, I don't have the SAF file available in my country at the moment, but Oscar was kind enough to make, um, to make this video for us. Um, and and, and um, the theory um, behind this file is that obviously uh, the file adapts to the, to the canal walls and, and as we've seen on those overpeated studies, um, rotary files cannot touch um, every every part of the, of the root canal wall and theoretically this file um, does, it, does it better, especially since we know that um, uh, canals are not obviously, obviously round and in, in cases of oval um, canals and, and, and large canals this file is it's pretty amazing. So moving to the last generation of uh, shaping files and hope the majority of you guys are still with me, especially the guys from Vanuatu. Hi guys, hope you're still awake. Okay, so the last generation uh, of shaping files we're gonna speak is the fifth generation. And um, this uh, generation, these files, uh, the files from this generation have been designed in, in such a way um, that the, um, the center of mass or, or the center of rotation, um, or, or actually both, um, are um, offset. Um, so, in what this means is that um, in, in continuous rotation, um, this, um, this offset um, design feature um, um, produces a, a mechanical wave of motion um, that travels um, along the active um, part of the file, um, actually um, uh, resembles um, Schilder's um, envelope <laughs> of motion. In this fifth generation, there's obviously a Pro Taper Next. I'm pretty sure you've heard about it. Um, but there's also uh, another system with this uh, offset design feature um, characteristic of the fifth generation of files. And that system is a Rev Revowax from the French company uh, Micromega. And I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Pro Taper Next and, and uh, the key design features because um, it's a system I've been, I've been using uh, lately. And... Um, a system that I, I've been I've been loving using. This is a a video from the um, from Dense Ply Melfa, and um, where we can see that um, that mechanical wave of motion um, traveling along the um, along the, the active part of the file I was talking to you about um, seconds ago. Um, this uh, is a more visual <laughs> way of understanding it. Um, but uh, what I like in this file is that uh, it combines. Um, Three key features, in my opinion. Um, obviously, um, a progressive taper on a single file. Um, it's it's a key feature from Pro Taper, um, a breakthrough since um, the first um, Pro Taper system that came up. This Pro Taper Next obviously has that progressive taper on a single file. Then they have um, the M wire technology, which which um, the thermal treatment of nitide bring us obviously 
um, much more um, safer and much, much more flexibility. And and um, the debris removal that we're watching here, it's it's uh, pretty amazing. Um, the fact that that the, the design of this file allows um, and it's uh, you can clearly see clinically um, the um, the excellent uh, removal of the debris this file produces. And let me let me show you a case um, where we used um, Pro Taper Next um, to shape these uh, mandibular molar um, four canals. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, a pre enlargement to a 20k file. Um, X1 from Pro Taper Next um, and X2. Um, this is a pretty straightforward system used um, uh, in uh, the files I used in brushy motion, and obviously. Um, it's, it's a great system, but not everything is perfect. And even though I'm using it for the majority of, of, of my cases now, um, there are some things um, that I don't like in this system. And, and those disadvantages for me are that, that X1 file from ProTaper Next um, uh, combines the S1, S2 and F1 from ProTaper Universal. Um, but it does not produce um, that coronal shaping I was used um, with the S1 in brushing strokes. So what I do is I advertise um, lots of times when I use Pro Taper uh, Next. I also uh, use um, I do my coronal flare with um, a Pro Taper Universal S1 file um, just for the coronal flare, and then I shape um, the rest of my canals with. Um, Pro Taper um, next. Another um, disadvantage is that, in my opinion, of course, is that the, the apical part um, of the preparations, um, and this is due to the to the offset design. Obviously, that mechanical wave that it produces, and um, it's not it's not that predictable. Um, but uh, but um, about apical preparation, you guys stay tuned uh, in this uh, in this meeting because. Um, Nick Grande and Gianluca Plotino uh, will be um, speaking um, specifically about apical preparations to um, amazing um, Italian uh, and the Dantes, um, and, and I'm pretty sure they're wearing beautiful <laughs> Italian suits. <laughs> so you guys stay tuned because their their uh, lecture is going to be uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be amazing. Um, but as I was saying, um, this um, this mechanical wave produces. Um, the apical shape uh, that produces is not that predictable and sometimes um, we must prepare our apical portion um, with um, another file system. And I brought you these um, pretty straightforward cases so you, so you can see that even in, in these um, pretty straightforward cases we can uh, use system um, hybridization. In this case um, ProTaper Universal S1 were used to, to the coronal flare um, and Pro Taper Next was used for the rest of the canal system. Um, you can take advantage of um, system designs, doesn't matter what generation they are, um, you can play them in your um, favor. Again, I'm, I'm sorry for not speaking um, specifically uh, and in detail of uh, every of the systems um, that we, we described here, but unfortunately uh, we didn't have time for that. We can be uh, hours speaking of each one of the systems and, and obviously that was not the point of, of, of this lecture. Again, just a pretty straightforward case with some clinical pictures and it's never too much um, to remind you irrigation, irrigation, irrigation. Of course, we do hybridization to take advantage of the file designs and, and, and the systems to achieve our mechanical objectives, but we should never forget about our biological objectives and the biological objectives of the, of the endodontic treatment. I'm also adding some of the restorative pictures um, from this case. Um, these restorative pictures, all the credits go to um, my dear friend Paulo Monteiro. Um, he did the restorative part. Uh, Paulo is, um, is Portuguese too and, and uh, is um, a very, very talented restorative dentist. And I'm very, very fortunate to, to be able um, to work uh, near him and to have him um, do the restorative part of some of my cases. An absolutely um, talented dentist. And 
this is uh, absolutely beautiful work and here we are <laughs> uh, this is me and Paulo uh, good friends uh, so thank you Paulo for um, for uh, giving our uh, lecture also your um, your beautiful pictures <laughs> and another great example of uh, hybridization in, in terms of shaping root canals this case from my um, dear friend Mario Pereira from Portugal where he combines um, three systems, three different generations uh, of systems um, to manage absolutely beautifully um, this curvature uh, in this mesiobuccal root of an upper molar. Same philosophy, shaping prior to the curvature, um, opening space uh, for irrigation and opening space uh, for um, the next instruments that are going to work in the in the in the apical uh, part of the uh, the canal and in the curvature uh, under stress, um, allowing them to work uh, with uh, with less stress and in a more safe way. And guys, I just want to show you um, one more case, and I brought this case. This case is um, a lower molar um, that have a, a that had a huge um, pulp stone, a very narrow canals. And, and I just brought this case um, today um, because I would like uh, to discuss to you uh, the point where we are to make a decision and, and, and the strategy uh, in terms of shaping. Uh, and sometimes what um, looks like a, a perfectly straightforward case, um, it's not. And of course, on the preoperative radiograph, we can see um, the pulp chamber calcification and we should suspect of, um, of some difficulties. In this case, um, the, 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 the mesial root canals were very narrow. Um, we, we had um, a hard time negotiating. There was a, a middle mesial canal, a uh, hard time negotiating the canals to the, um, to the foramen, um, hard time um, shaping these canals and then promoting a disinfection of these canals. And these kind of cases that um, when we start uh, or when we look to a pre-operative radiograph um, and they seem pretty straightforward, uh, we should never trust that. We should explore um, our canals with an 8K file or a 10K file. And then um, obviously that decision-making process has to go from there. So in this case, uh, we used um, rotary um, the glide path files um, to, to achieve a, a, a glide path after exploration. And then we used the uh, S1 from ProTaper Universal to shape the, um, the coronal and middle third in brushing strokes. Um, and after that, we used ProTaper uh, Next um, to the apical part of the canal. But the apical, um, the final apical preparation uh, was made with um, iFlex files on on uh, on the four canals, not the mesial. Me the medial mesial was confluent, so um, the four canals that reached um, that had the four independent um, exits um, were were shaped with um, with the final preparation with the with the iFlex. Showing you some images. This, this is the final operation images, and we have the. The radiographs here, um, five canals, and this is the, um, the 12 month um, control radiographs. Well, guys, um, this was um, all I would uh, like to discuss with you today. Um, I have some key learning points that I think are important. And before the guys from Venue Idol go to sleep, let's just um, go through all of these key learning points. Obviously, identifying decision-making factors, whether it's your user, what is the user experience with a system or uh, anatomy or um, every uh, single factor um, is important in making a decision and planning a strategy um, to shape and to decide what files are you using to shape your canals. Obviously, um, you have to know the different features of each system, of each system and, and uh, the difference between um, systems in shaping ability and safety, use those features in your advantage. And lastly, the most important, 
always keep in mind the biological objectives. Of course, you have to achieve mechanical objectives. Of course, um, the shaping strategies are important, but remember, um, irrigation, irrigation, you uh, shape to clean. Keep in mind the biological objectives of the treatment.